Hello. Hi, Dr. Miles. Hi. Hey, <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? Super powered. Yeah, we're excited here. Are we all set? Can you hear us really good? Everything set, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to introduce um, Rua, who is, how old are you? 13. 13. So she he, she has uh, the whole, the whole um, mic right now. So go ahead. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Rua. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So can you tell me about your recent work? Uh, sure. So basically the way I got into this project was when my mother got bronchitis, the antibiotics didn't work on her. So she resorted to Khaltarola, and she gave her some herbs, and it worked perfectly on her. So I decided to do some research on it. And um, I thought maybe it'll work better on resistant bacteria. You, you know, like when it does, when the bacteria is resistant to the antibiotics, mm -hmm. it might affect the bacteria more than the antibiotics itself. So I decided to test a critical staged bacteria called Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And Pseudomonas causes pneumonia and infections in the lungs and the respiratory system specifically. And it can be deadly to people with cystic fibrosis and even cancer. So I tested two different antibiotics with it, ceflozane tiazobactam and piperacillin. And then I also tested the two herbs, which were suggested, huangjin and uh, hu zhang. And then I, do, I basically just um, set up the TSA plates, used the bacteria. And in the end, the inhibition zones were really close between both of them. And I was wondering why the inhibition zones of the herbs was not as good as the inhibition zones of the antibiotics and found that the antibiotics um, were much more concentrated than the herbs. So I thought maybe if I concentrate the herbs even more, then it can inhibit more of the bacteria. And I want to continue this project even more for next year, maybe, hopefully. Why did you choose those particular herbs? Um, well, actually, those are the ones that I, that were suggested for me. And when mm -hmm. I did more research about it, I found that I forgot which one of them. I think it was um, Hu Zhang, who Hu that had that, the Hu Zhang, mm -hmm. who had the anti-cancerous properties. Uh huh. And so you were sp uh, specifically looking at how it was affecting the bacteria, how it was killing the bacteria, right? Yeah. How was it? How it was inhibiting the TSA plate with the bacteria on it? How were you able to check? Uh, did you count each bacteria or were you looking kind of at a general tendency? Well, I was actually measuring inhibition zones with mm -hmm. a ruler, a centimeter ruler. And the average inhibition zone for Hu Zhang, that's how you pronounce it? Uh-huh. Yeah. The average inhibition zone for that was pretty high. It was um, 1.53 when the highest average inhibition zone for... Uh, piperacillin was 1.54, so it was relatively close. Can you Despite tell us a little bit about how you set up your experiment and for those who don't know what an inhibition zone is? Sure. Um, so I put a certain amount of bacteria using the P100 pipette. It's a tool that um, exerts the exact measurement, which was for my project 50 microliters of the bacteria into the center of the TSA plate and I set it, spread it around with the cell spreader. Then I added different amounts of herbs. I did five microliters, 10, 20, 50, and 100 microliters into five different TSA plates each. And then I put those that amount into the middle of the TSA plate and then I incubated it for 48 hours and the, I measured in the, the inhibition zones, which was basically where the bacteria didn't grow. And it was supposed to be, it was this perfect circle. So you want to measure the radius of the circle. That's the inhibition zone. Okay, so the bigger the circle, the larger the inhibition zone? Yeah. Okay, and then the antibiotics were um, more powerful in terms of the larger inhibition zone. Is that right? Not it's not a dramatic difference, but it was there, yeah. Okay, interesting. And uh, where are you, what are you planning to do next with this project? 
I'm planning to use chromatography to separate the active from the inactive ingredients so I could test maybe if I concentrate the herb even more, it will perform better than the antibiotic as expected. Okay. And are there um, certain excipients that you're looking for with the Huzhang and the Huangqing? Well, I'm expecting them to perform better and inhibit more. I'm expecting them to extinguish the bacteria completely on the TSA plate. What uh, Has anything surprised you as a result of this experiment? Well, actually, um, yeah, uh, the fact that they could have, the Hu Jiang inhibited n uh, just 0.01 centimeter less than the antibiotic, despite the dramatic difference in concentration. So mm. it's, it's relatively more powerful, despite the concentration, which was really shocking to me because the the what was it the USP has to certify the antibiotics before they're sent out to ensure that they're the highest concentration and the most active ingredient when the herbs were, were fractioned in which the anti active ingredient was with the inactive ingredient meaning that its potential power wasn't there yet so if I could concentrate it even more I want to see the effects interesting and then uh with the chromatography, you're going to look at separating the a, a few of the active ingredients, or are you choosing one of the active ingredients? I'm a, I think I want to test all of them, the active, mm -hmm. all of the active, all of the inactive. Wow, that is excellent. Thank you. <laughs> How did you, you did this as part of a school project? A science fair, part of the Greater San Diego Science and Engineering Fair. And uh, how did you do? I got second place and one special award with the San Diego County Pharmaceutical Association. That is excellent. Uh, who got first place? Because I can probably kneecap them for you. <laughs> A lot of different people. They changed my category when I went up. It was a mistake. In, it was an error within their organization. So I believe if they had put me in the right category, which was medicine and health sciences, I could have, they could have went by my standards even more. Have you tasted these herbs personally? Uh, no, I didn't want to try Huang Jin specifically because I heard it was extremely bitter. And it is I've extremely been, bitter. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been told I'm a picky eater, so I don't think that'll mix well. That makes sense. Huang Qin has an active ingredient called berberine that is, um, it's also antiviral. It can interfere with the viral transcription. So I know that doesn't have anything to do exactly with your project, but um, it's used in a formula called Shao Chai Hu, which is one of the most popular herbal formulas that's sold in East Asia. So when people are getting a sore throat or a cold, they'll take that. So if it's a bacterial, the bacteria is going to get killed, you know, as you found. And then if it's viral, that can also slow down the viral progression by interrupting the transcription. So it's kind of nifty wow. that way. That's interesting. In fact, I didn't when you find take... That. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't find that in my research. That I've never heard of that. So yeah. And even at really high concentrations, what they'll do is wow. they'll take the berberine uh, from the Huangqin, and um, they'll give a mouse HIV, which isn't a kind thing to do, but then they inject yeah. it with this uh, antiviral. And if, it's, uh, if the mouse is infected within, I think, 48 hours, it actually will take out the HIV. Similar to, there's a drug called interferon, where if you are in the park and you get stuck with a needle, then you go to the hospital and they'll give you an uh, antiviral that's, um, you know, it works pretty, it works really well, but the, the side effect is that it causes liver damage. And I, with the Huangqin, it does the opposite. Wow. I, I think I actually read about that, that it had anti-HIV properties, but I never really understood how they did that. Yeah, you so. know how viruses replicate. They have to kind of spread the message to the next cell and then... Um, Huang Qin and a number of other herbs, they just interfere with the transcription, so it can't go anywhere. Wow. Also wow. for hepatitis, too. Uh, hepatitis C, there's a lot of research with, um, there's the larger herbal formula, Shao Chai Hu Tang, 
which uses the Huangqin in it, is very, very useful for hepatitis. And uh, hepatitis C is um, it's something people have for life, but what they found is you can drop the viral counts so low that people don't have any symptoms from it. That's incredible. I knew that it, the herbs are powerful, but I never knew that they were this resilient, honestly. I yeah, actually might want to study them more with different diseases and bacteria. I think that will be really interesting. The other thing that's kind of uh, neat about plants is because they're living, every year they're going to adapt. So every year bacteria adapt, you know, as they adapt to different strains of antibiotics. But um, because the plants have to deal with it themselves, then they can adapt sort of like, you know, your computer. It has to have antiviral software that's updated every year. And the plants can kind of adapt to their environment, and that helps us very real time so that we're not playing backup. We can just kind of uh, be in the same environment with the plants and they sort of auto update. Wow. Yeah, actually, I think I um, I found that somewhere. I One of the judges actually suggested that to me that maybe since the plants are living, they can adapt to it. And I found a lot of websites that I used, they had the same information. And I was, it blew me away completely. <laughs> uh huh. Did the judges have any other suggestions that really stuck out? Um, another one, I think it was the chromatography, but I had already thought of that one. Uh huh. Yeah, and then another one was to test it on, test different herbs. You know how there were other herbs that were suggested to me, but the they said Huang Jin and Hu Zhang were uh -huh. the most were the most effective. So it would be um, interesting to test the other herbs as well, and maybe the thing that you told me about the 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 Shao Chai Hu. Uh huh. Yeah, I'd like to test that as well. And in different diseases and different bacteria. That's really interesting to see if there are certain bacteria that are more killed by various herbs. You know, like one herb is mm -hmm. more specific for a particular type of bacteria. Yeah. Have you heard anything about this, Lauren? Oh, yeah, because uh, when Rola first reached out to me saying this is a bacteria that um, they're going to uh, do test on, and I searched uh, in the, I was looking for the research and show yeah. to see what kind of herbs actually work uh, specifically on this bacteria. So there is a body of research that is um, more or less uh, bacteria specific? Yeah, they are. Like, like basically every herb or formula that if it's on, uh, if it's research on antibacteria, they will say what kind of specific bacteria, bacteria it works better on. And then, for example, Huangqi might be uh, great for inhibit, inhibiting bacteria A, but not bacteria B. Yeah. That's really interesting because, you know, in the United States, um, when somebody comes into a Chinese medicine clinic, you just kind of go by the symptoms. But if mm -hmm. you could do, a, you know, a throat culture and really find out exactly which bacteria that might make it more specific is that yeah definitely it will be more like laser focused wow, wow. that's interesting and another thing is i'm really surprised when i was doing my when i was doing my experiment i found that the herbs would have performed better and i never really understood why it was undermined in the medical world it really made no sense to me I think it's just a matter of uh, controlling the dose because if you're not dealing with, if you're just taking a plant, then it's hard to predict exactly how much you're going to get every time. That's and so true. some of the um, methods for extraction, I think some of the, uh, yeah, some of the technology was a bit behind, especially about 10 years ago, but uh, currently it's pretty even. Mm-hmm. So do you have any recommendations for her to kind of keep going and some like a certain, you know, uh, project that she can actually find maybe a new, um, a new finding? <laughs> Just a second. I'll uh, pass it over to Lan. She can answer that. Okay. Uh, so I heard the next step 
is for uh, you're going to extract the active ingredients to mm -hmm. do further research, is that right? Yes. And do you know which group or uh, what kind of specific ingredients you're looking at? Not yet. Okay. Um, I would look for the specific uh, groups first. So the big direction is they're divided into the group that will dissolve in water and their group that dissolve in, uh, what do you call that, like lipid resolved mm -hmm. ingredients. And then those groups, they may have different properties or they may have different effects on the bacteria. Yeah. And then from there, look further for the specific ingredients in that group. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And I can also look uh, for some research, and I can probably give you a more specific uh, instruction or direction. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is great. I'm so excited to get this information and to know that this is working. Me too. Oh, actually, um, some pharmacists were interested in my research. They mm -hmm. said that they were in pharmacy school and they are doing a lot of research for their school. And they chose my project particularly because it was a new idea. Wow. That's wonderful. Thank you. And they're oh, going yeah. to add it to their research. So maybe it'll be a new movement for Chinese herbs. <laughs> that will be great. Oh, my God, that's great. And you are the key part of pushing this movement. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I'm sure it is. This is great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Awesome. All right. I think good. Okay. Already. We're good. We're good? We're good. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you so much for your time. I know it's a, it's a time-consuming thing, but thank you for making time for us. No, not at all. This is great. I'm so glad to be part of this too. Even of though course. I'm doing nothing, but to, <laughs> to watch this happening, it's exciting. I know, me too. I was too excited. Yeah. So awesome. We'll keep you posted um, and we'll, uh, we'll see where it, where it will end. <laughs> great. Sounds good. Thank you so much. We'll Thank be in you. touch. Thanks. We'll do. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks, you too. Bye. If you'd like to receive an email from me on the show content, references, and contact information for our amazing guests, then you'll want to go to botanicalbiohacking.com. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. There you can sign up for our email, like our Facebook page, and rate us on Stitcher or iTunes, all in one convenient location. Thanks again for listening to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Miles. <laughs>